Hello, what we're looking at here is the new interface of the new instrument by Fluffy Audio called Renascimento, which is a series of Renaissance instruments ranging from recorders and flutes, brass instruments, string instruments, lutes, um, organs, uh, harpsichords, the old hurdy-gurdy and percussion. And, and a few other instruments to boot. Um, I'm doing a review of that in a separate video, but I just thought I'd go through the basic interface in this video to save me having to go through uh, each instrument separately on the other video. So I've loaded up the Renaissance trombone. Um, just to show you, this is a um, contact instrument designed for the full version of contact. It will not work with contact player. It is a library, as I said, based on um, Renaissance instruments. It consists of a trombone and cornet, recorders of various um, pitches, including also a tabor pipe and uh, other fluty instruments. It's got harpsichords and organ organs, uh, various lutes and re Renaissance guitars and Baroque guitars. Um, it's got a percussion section, the tambourines and drums. It's got some reed sections, the old crumb horn, and a few others there. And then finally it's got some strings, the Baroque violin, um, the hurdy-gurdy, and the viola. So I've just loaded up the Renaissance trombone here, and I'm going to go through the interface uh, fairly quickly, just so you can see uh, an idea of what they do. And bear in mind that all the instruments follow a very similar interface to this, and therefore once you get the idea of this interface, we don't have to worry about showing you the interfaces for all the others. So the way the instrument is set up is on the left-hand side here, we have the articulations window in the top, and underneath we have the microphone mix window. We also have a large chamber reverb as default, but you can click on the drop-down list and choose between some mid-ambience, dark room, bright room, theatre, etc, etc. And these are convolution reverbs. So we'll leave it on large chamber for the time being. You've got the close, mid and far mics, all of which you can right-click on and learn CC automation. So I can learn that one, for instance. I can then learn that with a slider. And I can learn that with the slider. So now I've got complete control over the microphones. And all the mics are loaded all the time. So you can see here this Renaissance trombone only uses up 266 megabytes with all the microphones loaded. Over in the right hand window here, you have the information window, which we're currently looking at with a lovely name and a, a picture of the instrument, a lovely sketch there. And then a very simple description of what that instrument is designed to do underneath. And then you've got instrument settings and remapping. The instrument settings allow you to play with the engine accuracy, and you've got low, medium, high, and perfect. You've got the tuning. You can tune between 442 and 440. You can then humanize the tuning to give you a little bit of variance in your tuning. You've then got a dynamic range knob where you can choose various um, decibel gain reductions, uh, 24 minus 24 is the default, but we'll show you what that does in a second. Then you've got a control over the curve, the velocity curve, and you can see you can change the shape of the velocity curve, including the min and max velocity. Um, not all instruments are velocity sensitive. For instance, most of the sustains, for instance here the legato sustain, depends entirely on the CC1 controller. So changing this won't make much difference to that but it will on things like the staccato, which will be velocity sensitive. So that's the instrument settings. And then finally we've got the remapping, where you can remap CC control. Um, in almost all cases, the sustain is controlled by the mod wheel, primarily set to CC1, but you can change this to CC to any other CC just by clicking a mouse and dragging up and down. The vibrato amount by default is also set to CC1, but you can change that as well. And the vibrato, it reminds you here, will only work when there's modelled vibrato on an instrument. And not all instruments will have modelled vibrato, depending on the way they play. So back to instrument settings, and we're going to play some notes. So this is the Renaissance trombone, and this is the legato articulation, where CC1 controls the dynamics.
So it's a, it's a nice little sounding trombone, and you can hear there we were not playing with any of the microphones, and it sounds quite nice. But the three microphones are thus, the close mic, let's just turn off the chamber, quite dry, mid mic, Nice mid mic there, and then the far mic. Bring them all up together. Important to note there are no phase problems with these libraries. They do sound very, very good indeed. And we've got good control over the large chamber up to full here. and then bring it down to somewhere respectable. The other um, reverbs here are very good. I particularly like caves. They're, they're great for playing uh, brass instruments in. Listen to this with a cave on the trombone. Lovely long decay there on the cave. So um, good control you've got there, and obviously the uh, samples are pretty good in this. So we'll go back to large chamber. Okay, so in the accuracy settings, this basically looks at the way that the um, the engine is playing back the samples, the way that it is is using modulation of the of the scripts and stuff. So we'll leave that on medium. Um, the higher you turn it, the more CPU you'll use and maybe a little bit more precise, the sound, but I wouldn't worry about that. The humanized tuning is brilliant. If you turn it up to full there and just play. And then down. It does change the tuning. It is quite subtle, but it is, as it says here, humanizing. Therefore, it doesn't make it too uh, obscenely awful. It does just subtly change the pitch variation. So we'll leave that around about there for the moment. And as I said, the velocity curve doesn't make much difference. Now I'm playing legato and I'm pulling the model lever right back and then right forward. Very little control. Bring it all the way down to 102. Model lever all the way down. No volume at all. All the way up. So with the dynamic range control, you can really change the way the instrument responds to the dynamics. Uh, and leaving it somewhere in the middle seems to be a happy place for it to be. So I'm going to put it back to about minus 36. So fully removed back on your mod lever, you're going to get minus 36 decibels of gain reduction. and you can use that to blend in and blend out. There are some libraries that allow you the option to fade to nothing, and this will do that with the minus 100 decibel gain control. So that's the uh, Legato um, instrument with the, the various settings going on there. The staccato instrument in this case is now velocity sensitive, so let's look at the velocity curve. Let's put the curve on, there we are, flat to start with. No velocity control at all. All very loud. So we can turn the curve somewhere to the middle and then remove the velocities right down. And now we've got virtually no velocity control. It's all very, very quiet. And then we can increase the max velocity and leave the min down at zero. And now we've got the full range of velocity control fairly linearly. There are instances where you want to raise the minimum velocity and give your instruments a little bit more pizzazz at low velocities. So just turn the volume down a bit and then play with that and you can hear that the, the range is actually restricted but quite playable.
So you've got some fine control there, which is really nice. By default, all the instruments load up with the curve set fairly near the middle, so it's fairly linear, with the min set to minimum, naught velocity, or one velocity, and the max set to uh, the maximum, which is one, two, seven. So there are the basic settings there. Go back to info. So on the articulation side, this instrument, as it loads from the factory, as it were, has the legato and the staccato. By clicking on the little cogwheel here, you can choose various uh, attacks, legatos, sustains and releases, and you can choose them from the library that's available to you. So for instance, here you can see for the uh, primaries, you've got sustains, staccato and releases, and you can choose between um, a diff couple of different durations of staccato and a couple of different sustains and releases. Um, the legato samples, in other words, the, the long sustains between the notes, are actually incredibly long, so it's very unlikely you'll need to uh, change the last sustain because it's highly unlikely you're ever going to reach it. But it does mean you can change the, the samples that have been used, which is really quite nice. You can, of course, change the releases, and if I just play you a couple of notes... That's the standard release, and you can choose a staccato round robin release. And you can hear the releases change there, so we'll put that back to the releases. You've also got this model vibrato, which we turn it on here, and you can hear the amount. And increase the rate. There's also a fade in time for the model vibrato, so set down to 20. It's there immediately, and you can set it as you can see here as much as 1.6 seconds. So that's quite a nice way of adding a bit of model vibrato to these instruments that were recorded mostly without vibrato or just the natural vibrato of the performer. So that's a nice little addition to have, and this is something that's been used in a lot of these instruments by um, this company now. So that's the basic editor for you. So what can you do with the basic editor? Because at the moment, this is a legato patch, um, and I may not want to play legato, I may want to play polyphonic. And I can't. So I can rename this one polyphonic. So I can go down here and choose polyphonic. And I can change the kind of performance to polyphonic, and now it becomes a polyphonic sustained section with a standard release, and press close on that. But now, of course, it's relabeled my lovely legato articulation with polyphonic. But I've now got polyphonic. Which is very nice. But I want my legato back as well, so that's really cool. You can just press on this plus button here, and you can add another articulation. And by going to the cog, I can choose this to be our new legato. So let's just go down and choose legato from the list, if I can find legato from the list. Legato. Set it as a legato. Um, assign a key switch to it, so just press a keyboard on the key on the keyboard, and there's a new legato, so F minus 2 is now legato. So I've now got polyphonic, staccato, and legato. And back to polyphonic. And then staccato. So you can actually add a further one articulation, leaving us with four articulations. Of course, once you've made these articulations, you can't drag and drop and change the order. So if you're used to having, for instance, legato as your first one, staccato, and then whatever, polyphonic, you'll need to set them up in advance. But you can quickly click on the trash can here, click on each articulation, delete all of your articulations, apart from the first one, you obviously can't have an instrument without one articulation, but then you can reprogram that articulation into, for instance, your legato. Let's go to legato. There we go. Happy with all those settings. Choose a key switch. And then you can add another, look, another articulation underneath. And for instance, this one, we can choose um, a staccato 
this is going to be a polyphonic. The main group will be our staccato with the staccato releases. We'll choose our key switch. And now we've got legato and staccato key switches. So the instruments are very flexible, and other instruments may have different articulations uh, other than just staccato, legato, and sustains. So it's worth considering that uh, when you're playing with the articulation window. It's a shame you can't add all of them. Um, many of them only have three or four, but it would be nice if you could add more and more, uh, and maybe a little bit more manipulation. But actually, this is a, a good start. Um, so just a reminder then, this is the uh, Renaissance trombone from the new library by Fluffy Audio called Renaissimento which is a collection of Renaissance and Baroque instruments for Native Instruments Contact.